Hi hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about Metro. But not Metro, the Romanian store chain, but rather this Metro. The Metro Trilogy on the PS4. Metro 2033 Redux is the graphically enhanced version of the 2010 PS3, 360 and PC game. And it comes with some nice additions, though hardcore fans say that the improvements make the game too easy. For example, the analog watch Artyom has in the original version is replaced by a digital watch that tells you the time in seconds to know when to change your filter, and the game hardcore fans claim that it's easier on PS4. The Redux version is easier to play than the more hardcore version on the PS3. And in my opinion, in both games, the gameplay still remains clunky, jumping feels clunky throughout the whole playthrough and even shooting feels clunky until you get used to it. The game has to alternate gameplay styles. You can tackle the game as a hardcore player and try to survive with very little ammo and supplies, or you can play the game in survival mode, where even if the game's description says that it's more action focused, you will still find yourself out of ammo if you're not careful. AI is very permissive on the normal difficulty. You can run past guards or enemies without them noticing your obvious behavior, but on the harder difficulties you won't be able to do this stuff anymore, so keep that in mind when choosing difficulties. And it's weird that if you run out of ammo, running around the map and waiting for your allies to shoot the monsters is a valid option, on the normal difficulty at least. On the harder runs you die if you do that. Actually it's a really tough game if you play it on the hardest difficulty. During the gameplay you can use collected bullets to trade them in for stuff. Bullets are the currency in the game. You can buy more ammo or different ammo types, you can buy weapons and buy weapon upgrades with bullets. The gameplay is varied, you get some slight puzzle solving, a turret level and a mini game level, which is very clunky. But it's still welcomed because they spice up the gameplay. As for the story, it's the best part of the game. It's engaging and keeps you pushing through the clunky mechanics. After nuclear feuds, the population is now forced to live in subway stations. Thus the name, Metro. The air on the surface is toxic and mutant creatures roam the previously inhabited area. The atmosphere and the presentation of the game is really really good. And I like the variety too. You get stealth parts, shooting parts, puzzles, turrets and other mini games. Overall, it's a good game and has the Overall, it's a really good game, but it has the drawback of being clunky, at least until you get used to the game. It's still very great and I recommend you to play it only so that you can play the latter Metro games. Metro Last Light is the direct sequel of 2033, and while the game has the same core mechanics and looks, it is different to the other one, and not just in story. The game is more epic, or at least it was in my point of view. The story and the gameplay elements were way better put together. I felt that this game is more epic. In the gameplay department you get the same core mechanics from the previous game. The scavenging for ammo, which is scarce in the game, the mutant killing, stealth levels, turret levels, which are plenty here. You get all those elements from the other game, only that here, in my opinion, they are better executed. Also the game didn't feel clunky anymore, and this is the point I realized that I just needed a game and a half to get used to the mechanics of the franchise. Oh and the boss battles in the game are a nice new addition. But the game also has some flaws too, for example in multiple occasions the stealth takedown button didn't appear no matter how close I was to an enemy. And another annoyance that I stumbled upon pretty often was that the throwing knife will pass through an enemy and disappear without killing the enemy. But aside of these inconveniences, I don't have anything to complain about. The game is good, and after you finish the around 10 hour long story, you get DLC content that adds around 3 hours more of gameplay. Each DLC tells a different story from the perspective of a different character. 
Metro Last Light manages to keep the same gameplay mechanics while integrating them into a more epic story. And if you play the two games one after the other, it makes sense. The action escalates more and more, passing you through some memorable epic moments. In fact, the two games feel so related that you could call them two parts of the same adventure. Metro 2033 being part 1 and Last Light being part 2. Metro Exodus is the game I like the most out of the trilogy. It's the most polished one and the most action packed one. But here I think that tastes say their word. Usually I'm not into post apocalyptic games where you shoot mutants and crawl into many times claustrophobic spaces. The first two games are an exception though, even if I don't like this kind of games, in Metro I found myself more and more interested, especially the last levels of Last Light made me a fan of the series. Where I want to get with this, is that Metro Exodus feels less like the first two games and more like an adventure game. The story unfolds in an odyssey, you travel with a train and have to bypass all the obstacles you encounter. I'm not gonna tell you where you go and what you do because that would mean to spoil the story for you. But where I want to go with this is that I found more resemblance in some levels to other games rather than the first two Metro games. There were times when I felt like in a Far Cry game or in Mad Max and I like that. I like how the universe is expanded in this game, but some may prefer the dark undergrounds of a metro station and its tunnels, or a devastated Moscow, rather than big, op rather than big open spaces where you can free roam, or forests, or deserts. The game brings many improvements over the previous games. Artyom now has a compass at hand, which is really useful. I didn't add anything to the other mechanics where you had to press the touchpad button to bring the compass up. But having the compass at hand and being able to shoot while also seeing the direction where you have to go was for me a big step up. And when you bring up the map, you can see how far away your target is. As I said, you get some big free roam spaces in this game. The game is split into 12 levels and 3 of these levels are big free roam spaces. You, you get a big region around the Volga river, a big desert region around the Caspian Sea and a mountain region in the Taiga. The other 9 levels are linear and I have to say that this formula makes the game feel balanced. I mean after a long free room level, the linear storytelling in other levels lets you breathe. Other new game mechanics in the game include throwing garbage to distract guards. And you also get a new light on your watch that indicates if you are visible to guards or to enemies. You also get a workbench where you can upgrade your gear or change the characteristic of a weapon. You can craft new items or upgrade your suit. It's really useful and it's a really nice addition. Also here you can clean your weapons. Because if your weapons get dirty they are less effective. But as big of a step up I consider the game, I can deny that it has many performance issues. For example, throughout the whole gameplay, you have these moments where the game has slowdowns. Remember the teaser trailer where the movement was a bit slow? It's the same here too. There are frequent moments where the game gets slow, and the most annoying part is that it gets back to normal and slows down again, and in a shooter where you need to target stuff, this can be an obstacle. And the slowdowns aren't the only problem you stumble upon. You get glitches too, like characters passing through walls or black jittering textures, and also freezes. My game froze and I had to restart the game. And I also had a bug where a character randomly stopped talking and I had to restart the game in order for that character to continue his dialogue and progress in the game. Which leads me to another problem, the loading times, long loading times, around 2-3 to three minutes when you switch from one level to the other or when you get into the game. Even when you die and the game loads, the level loading time can be long. But even if the performance issues are undeniable, I still had a lot of fun in the game. And the story is intriguing, it gets you, you want to know what happens next. 
the story is well written and the game has multiple endings too. But even if I listed you a big list of performance issues, the game is still very playable and I totally recommend it to you. I consider it the best out of the trilogy. Ok so this was the video, if you liked it please hit the like button and subscribe, if you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section, you will help me a lot. If you want you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, and if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.